Ooh, I need water, Lilips. Oh, I have water. Hello! It's nine o'clock and it is... Wine Wednesday! <laughs> it's Wine Wednesday, says me while drinking water. Because <laughs> my mother doesn't drink wine. Because her mother doesn't drink wine. People say that I should start to tell people that I drink alcohol because apparently I'm drunk or I seem to come across drunk. <gasps> who's looking at me? I'm seeing someone, but I can't see who's looking. <gasps> Why not? Swipe to the left to see of yours. Oh, look, I have help today. Oh, hey, real people. Hey, hey Cerulea, Cerulea. How's your wedding plans coming along? Cerulea is like the bomb singer, guys. If you are not following Cerulea, then you're lame. She is like the best singer in the world. She is from Trinidad, but she is somewhere in Asia. I don't know if she's in Hong Kong, Tokyo, wherever she is. Today. She's planning her wedding at the moment. Hi, Ariana. Hi, Luke. Hi, Jason. Hi, Stefan. Hi, I don't know because I can't see. Hi. Okay. So, I went to see this show called Kidnapped, right? With Halle Berry. First to begin, Halle Berry doesn't seem to be aging. I don't know what's going on, but she doesn't seem to be aging. Kudos to her for that. And, um, quite a few people commented on my blog saying, you know, she's a badass, and um, I was kind of like, but I think she's a dumbass. So I'm confused as to why people, like, thought, I mean, I get the whole, but, but it's, it's a movie, and in real life, none of the things that she really did would actually work in real life, and it would not have resulted in her getting back her son. So I wanted to take the opportunity to talk about um, you know, of course, I can't see comments, right? So if y'all are leaving me any comments, I can't see them. I never know why I can't see them, but I can't! Have you shared? I ain't seen nobody share this video yet. Could you please share before I start to get into, like, the meat of it? Somebody say, somebody bad me up the other day saying, I like your lives in a way. It takes too long to get into the, like, meat of the topic. All this rah, 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 rah. I was like, wow. I kind of wait for people to, like, you know, tune in and get the notification that I'm on and all of that before I get into the, you know. Anyways, so I have a lot of notes. Um, why can't I see comments? Ariana, can you do me a favor and comment? Could somebody comment so that I could see if it is that you're just not commenting normally by the time? Oh my gosh, this living room is like freezing cold. I went and put on a sweater and I'm still feeling myself like <gasps> trembling. I don't know what's up with my child. It's the Canadian blood, obviously. Anyways, right. I'm hot. She's saying she's hot. I feel like my hair. I kind of combed my hair today. I went out. Right. Um, okay, so. I wanted to talk about Kidnapped, and I wanted to talk about Stranger Danger. I wrote a blog on Stranger Danger, and on my comment, guys, 9 o'clock is like so late. I'm like, ready to go take a nap. Oh well. Um, <laughs> you're not supposed to be talking across there. You promised you would stay quiet if you got to stay up. So. Stranger danger. Somebody was saying, like somebody had commented on my article, the kidnapped article, and you know her thing was, if you know if there is this whole stranger danger, then why do we encourage our kids to say hi to everybody? And that's something that I'm really passionate about, right? Because there is no excuse for bad manners, like plain and simple. So if it is that. You're afraid of stranger danger, and so you can't say good morning and good afternoon, and I'm very sorry. Then our kids are officially dumb, and we're raising dumb kids. Like, I know that sounds really bad, but, I mean, we need to give our kids some credit. Like, they, they could know the difference between good manners and stranger danger. I mean, I, I know that our education system you know, research proves that we don't encourage critical thinking, but we can encourage critical thinking at home. So we can, and y'all know I'm big on role playing, right? So pretend to be a stranger. I do think, I do not know, and somebody there who's techie could find a way to clip out the part on Kidnapped where she plays the voice note from the kid's toy. And she shows how the, you know, and, and he's old enough, like, the truth is he's old enough, so there really is no reason for him to have gotten caught in her 
conniving ways because she was like, hey, what's your name? And then a sentence later, she's like, your mom was looking for you. Aren't you so, so, so? And she calls his name and whatever. And like, seriously, we need to raise critical thinkers who are a little bit spunky. And this is the problem with raising children who are not spunky, who are not. We can see you, dude. We can see you. Just letting you know, we can see you. Right? I'm really like, I can't see comments. I, I never know why. And I, I begged Ariana just now to send me a comment. She Ariana. Did. I know. How do I see the comments? Hold on. <sighs> no, that's swipe left to see your viewers. That's my viewers. Auntie Jenny, Brandon, y'all. Oh, look. Yeah, look, people. You see, look, people who are now. Oh, right. Good night. Good night, Suzanne. It was nah, me who did it. Don't study them. Okay, right. Oh, look, and people shared. Yay! La oh, somebody's laughing at my hands, and now the comments are gone again. Okay, right. I signed on to see you trying to swallow us. <laughs> yes, I was yawning. Oh, gosh, that would be so mean. Okay, yes, okay, right, great. So, I'm seeing the comments so that I cannot ignore you guys. <gasps> Sorry. Okay, right. So, um, what was I saying? Okay, in the video, she, like, she... She's playing the thing, right? She's playing, and he's like, she has basically said, so what's your name? And so Jessie Lee, let's pretend it's Jessie Lee, would say, Jessie. And then she says, you know, two more things, like, where's your mom, or whatever. And then she goes, you know, actually, I saw your mom in the car park because, you know, she was looking, there was this, this lady who was looking for her kid. And she was like, I'm looking for my kid, and he's brown with curly hair, and his name is, whatever his name is. And, like, he was like, Really? So I'm going to go through what I call the password rule. Maybe I should back up, right? I'm going to back up. Then I'm a different kid and you're the um, bad, bad person. We can do that. Do you want to pretend the password rule? Yes. Okay. So, I'm not going to say the password. I'm going to pretend the Yes, password. please don't say the password, right? Because the only two people in this world that know the password is... It's me and him. But if... I have to go with somebody, they must know the password. So mommy will tell them the password. They have to tell the password to me. If they don't say the password, uh-uh. So at least y'all know I don't make this stuff up. <laughs> that I really do teach my child the stuff that I'm about to tell y'all. Good job. Bye bye. Make me look good there. So the password rule. But before we go into the password rule, I know that there are a lot of moms that are all judgmental. Did I roll over your foot? Oh. There are a lot of moms that are judgmental. We can't concentrate with you in the back here. You're going to have to go to sleep. You have a bath to take. You don't want to go take your bath? Okay, well, go. Eat your mango. Get out of my screen. Yes, yeah, six people. Seven people shared my video already. Let's let up. Seriously, on a serious note. I'm going. Thank you. Right. So... I know that people think that, you know, what's your kid doing out of your eyesight and blah, 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 and all those kind of things. But again, if you look at the beginning of the movie, she's playing Marco Polo. And we could say that's not an appropriate game and blah, 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 and all these good old things. The truth is, when you're in a public space and kids are having fun, there might be just that one second that they're not in your eyesight. And it happens. You may have gotten, I mean, the phone call that she got is a really scary serious phone call did she have to turn her back no she didn't have to turn her back so yes we know the obvious things try to maintain eye contact even try to maintain a space right but the truth is at the bank sometimes jesse would rather go and sit so i can see her but i can't hear her conversation so that's another we're going to talk about appropriate conversation right so anyways so Let's assume something really does happen. I mean, things happen, right? Shit happens. Like, shit happens. And we can't put our head in the sand and go, well, I'm never going to let her out of my sight, so I don't even need to go further than that. I just need to get stuck on, I'm never going to leave her out of her sight. Let's just pretend something happens. For whatever reason, something happens, and you guys separate. One, when you're lost, stay in the spot that I saw you. Plain and simple. If you stay in the spot, the last spot that I said to stay in, because the kid in the movie wasn't being naughty. He didn't wander off. So that's a whole other conversation, right? And somebody asked when you started to talk about stranger, stranger danger. 
Child safety is the same thing like body parts. If you start talking about the rules of not wandering off from the time they can start a walk, then by the time they're seven, they know to keep their butts still. And don't say because it's embarrassing or you'll get licks or all kind of stuff. Give the real stuff. Give the real reasons, you know, why they need to stay put. If this is the space that you're supposed to stay because I need to go use the bathroom or, or I don't know, whatever reason might happen, why, you know, you guys get separated. Stay put. Stay put. Don't move. And if it's been an hour, don't move. Unless, of course, I mean cell phone, police, whatever, right? They're, they're, I mean, I'm gonna try to give this whole lesson in like 30 minutes, so bear with me. All right, anyways, if this were dealing with the password, if a, somebody comes to you and they say, well, your mom's looking for you because they've done the whole try to con you and tell you your name and ask you your name and then tell it back to you like you knew it from before. Say, well, did my mom send you? Yeah. So what's the password? And it's not a password that nobody can guess anytime soon, by the way. I'm feeling like I'm seeing my hair sticking out all over the place, poor thing. My hair is as unruly as I am. So that's one, right? And the truth is, like, you just, you don't move. And I've said that to Jesse in these exact words. If a week pass and you need to poop and pee in that same spot, you don't move. You don't go with anybody. We have a very, we do something called your, your trusted circle, right? And I could be dating a guy. It could be all kind of people. Aunts and them not even on that trusted circle. That is like a handful of people on that trusted circle. And you don't go with none of them, plain and simple. And if, if I have fallen down, I mean, if I'm unconscious, well, then we have a problem. She's not gonna move. And I'm gonna have to find somebody to, in the trusted circle to come and pick her up because she's not gonna move, plain and simple, right? And so we've, we have lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of conversation. I personally think teaching stranger danger is being lazy because it's like this, um, I mean, there are some people that do it really well, that take the time and explain it because good morning and good, good afternoon is not stranger danger. Someone comes up to you and says to you, oh my gosh, look how pretty. And you start a rant and rave, stranger danger, stranger danger, which I have seen. I have seen parents teach children stranger danger, like blanket statements, right? And somebody says, hey, what's your name? And Stranger danger, stranger danger, stranger danger. And I'm very sorry, but that's laziness. That is teaching rob robotic behavior. And it's certainly raising a bunch of kids who are not capable of critical thinking. That is not stranger danger. And I mean, I'm very sorry. Jessie Lee sits down in the bank and strikes up conversation. If, I mean, she went to Digicel Park the other day, that carousel thingy. When she done, Jessie know everybody name, them know her name. And, not, and I am not changing that for the world. But there is appropriate conversation for strangers and there's inappropriate conversation for strangers. If I am not in a vicinity to guide you, for instance, in the bank, because I can see you, but you're way too far for me to hear what you're saying, you're way too far for me to guide the conversation appropriately, then there are rules. Don't talk about my love life, because somehow people like to ask questions like that, like, you know, does mommy have boys sleeping over? Like, that is none of your business, whether or not I do. Like, adults ask them really random questions. Um, you can talk about my age, you can't talk about our finances, and... Oh, you can't talk about our address. So there are certain things that you can't talk about, and you know, but you could do you. So normally they'd say, because it always happens during the day, right? She's with me during the day. And so it always goes, so how come you're not at school? And that normally just keeps the conversation in homeschooling. And she talks about homeschooling and they'll ask, so you don't miss your friends? And they'll talk about that. Anytime the conversation starts to become inappropriate, because again, we do a lot of role playing. So if you sit and you play games, this is good bonding time, right? It's, I, I so wish that I could, oh geez, I can't see your comments again, as usual. Oh well. Right, okay, I could see it now. Y'all just didn't comment in a long time, that's what it is. Oh, y'all are so like, gross, like en engrossed in my conversation. Anyways, so, if, um, 
we use a lot of we use our bonding time like we use our driving time like we are constantly talking about these things right and if you've ever met jesse lee or if you've ever met myself we don't walk around in fear like we are the least fearful people that you will ever meet this crime situation we just still be going where we want how we want and when we want by we damn self plain and simple so the conversations and the constant conversations actually do not instill fear in your children. If you do it in a fearful manner, and if you are fearful, then it's gonna instill fear. But I found that instill, if you are prepared, then there's no need to be afraid. I will give an example. So that is a password rule, right? So guys, go home, get a password, teach it to your child. Everybody should have a different password. It's you and your child alone, and I nobody else. You and your child alone know this password. If for whatever reason you guys get separated, a stranger cannot come and tell you your mommy is looking for you without a password. Plain and simple. Second rule is the cell phone rule. We are engrossed. I totally agree. Yay! I hope y'all are sharing. Like and share. Like and share. Y'all need to be interacting with me. So even if you can't comment, when I say something that you like, y'all should send me some hearts. So, seriously. Anyways, next. So next conversation is the cell phone rule. Do your, do your children know what to do? I mean, are they constantly practicing, preparing? In, an, in case of an emergency, I mean, I tell Jessie Lee all the time, the day you get licks is the day you panic, buddy. Like, I get super crazy mad for panickers. Because when you panic, you can't do nothing right. Like, you can't. You can't think, you can't implement anything, and the way to do that is to keep reinforcing, keep reinforcing, keep trying things out, keep scaring the living shit out of them. You know, there are things that you could do. <laughs> I mean, self-defense classes are really good, you know, but send them a dog every now and then, whatever, scare them. But you have to constantly be talking about not panicking, thinking things through, staying relaxed. This is what we do. And the more that you practice something, you see how Jesse, I mean, I know y'all wouldn't know, y'all could just trust me, but I spoke about the password rule and she knew immediately because this is not something that we talk about once every year, once every five years, teach it once and you forget. This is something that we are constantly aware of. If we go into a public space, we talk about it, it's reminded. If, you know, when we are driving around, like sometimes I'll randomly say, so if something happens to mommy here, what would you do? And she would look around and she would say, well, the first thing I'll do is I'll get your phone and I'll go on Facebook Live and I'll show people where we are, right? That's another thing. When she, when the, when Halle Berry had picked up the phone to call 911, she's like, I need help. Well, die, you need help? You've called 911. So stop wasting your words with I need help. The first words you need to be saying is your address. That's the first words coming out of your mouth. Because if that's the only words that they hear, that's all they need to know. Plain and simple. This kind of, I need help. I'm, I am scared. I'm this. I'm... None of that helping you. You need to get to the point. I live at or I am at this one. Don't even say I am at. Lady on road. Now. Kidnapped. Like, use short words, and your kids need to be able to say these things really quickly. And the way to be able to do that is when you're driving home, say, yo, if we get kidnapped now, what are you doing? And let them look around. I mean, Jessie, they can look around, and she'll say, actually, I'm going to go in that bush and hide, because then I could tape you quickly, and I could this, and I could that. And you see her brain working like some kind of private detective investigator, something. And that could only happen through daily practice. When you're driving... Pick a spot and say, all right, a gunman come up to us now. What are you going to undo? What are you going to, you know, these kinds of things. And let them think it through. Let them think it through. Let them think it through. These things need to be something that you practice all the time, right? So role play. I'm a big fan of role play. Cell phone emergency rule. What do you do? If we're at home, what do you do? Who are the numbers that you call? I'm very sorry. 999-990-991-99 me in care is not part of our rules. I sorry, because a seven year old, they're going to ask her more questions and she can answer and I get on dead by the time we get through. So she has a list of numbers that you call and in the order that you call. I love my mother to death and I'm not bad talking her, but she's not the first person. And we have to understand who the people that should be. Is it a clear thinker? 
Is it someone on Facebook who has a wide reach so that if they post on Facebook one time, you know we get in service? Is, it, is there somebody that you know who might be in the police force who answers their phone all the time? If you have someone like a dad or a mom or a brother or whoever that's really good and they're not going to panic but they never answer their phone, should that be the first person that you call? No. It may not even have to be somebody who you're very close to. But it must be someone who guaranteed going to answer their phone. It must be someone who is not a panicker. And, so, and, and they need to be able to guide. Because Jesse Lee knows, if you're picking up the phone, I'm all about Facebook, right? You're picking up the phone and you need to be tagging Marsha and you need to tell the person, like guide the person through it because the person you call might be a panicker, might panic even though we think they're not a panicker and you need to say, hi, we are so, 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 this is where we are, we need help, please post on Facebook, then call the police, right? And then you go down to number two and you tell them the same thing and you go down to number three, yeah? So there must be cell phone rules. Who do you call first? Make sure it's on your favorites because some kids do not, can't remember all the numbers. So set your Facebook up in a way, set your phone up in a way that can make it very easy for your child to use in case of emergency. I've said it before and I'm going to say it again. Teach your children to go live on Facebook. Guys, that is something that you need to think about. Let me tell you, when I walk in by myself, my Facebook open and ready to go live, you know, partner. I will tell you a story yesterday. Yesterday we were walking home from the bank, walking out to the bank, and we're not walking home from the bank, walking to the car park. And a lady comes up to us and she asks, you know, about how to take a taxi to get to wherever she was getting and whatever. So me and her to take a taxi to get to wherever. So she's like, well, I need to get to the mall. I knew the mall was walking distance. So I said, well, it's walking distance. Um, so just walk, right? I said it nicely, don't worry. And um, she's like, but it sounds so hot. I was like, well, I don't think that you're going to get a taxi from here to Trin City, more, Trin City Mall, so you should really walk. Now, did I want to offer a drop? Yes. Did I think that it was really the sensible thing to do? I don't know yet, right? Because, I mean, there is a balance. And Jesse Lee and I love people to death. I mean, we pray for our garbage man. We feed our local vagrant. We cool. We real cool with everybody. But... You know, uh, as much as I'm fearless, I also use wisdom. So we go into the car park. Jessie, of course, you know, the, the niceness in her starts to be, Mom, why don't we drop her? And I said, well, I am actually considering it. And so I explained to her why I did not ask right away. And these are the things, like, people will think we care less, you know, but that's because I don't share what I think in my brain with every single person. So we get into the car. I look to see... If she asks around people, other other people in the in the car park, because if it's a if it's somebody who up to no good, they're not gonna start a walk. You're gonna see them like, you know, waiting around, just lazing around. They're gonna be up to no good. You're gonna you're gonna see that they're in the car park and they're just kind of like waiting for the next victim to see who they could catch and that kind of thing. She promptly started a walk, and so we drive out, and she was walking with purpose towards Trin City Mall. So. I stopped and so I told Jesse again, this is another point that you have to remember. So Jesse Lee went to the back instead of sitting in the front. She went to the back because even if Jesse's sitting in the front, I'm not putting a stranger behind me because guess what? If a stranger sitting behind you, they, 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 this is asking for trouble. You need to put the stranger on the side of you where you have more control. Jessie Lee also had my cell phone and she was not sitting behind me, but she was sitting behind the stranger Because if you try anything then my child gonna take the, the, the seatbelt and she gonna unstrangle you So she's sitting behind you and she in control and she have her cell phone Unlocked open and ready to implement the cell phone emergency So yes, I can offer a drop because I've felt it out. I've you know used so there is a spirit sense of things as well but we've done it in in, in, you know, in a safe manner, we've done it with, her, with all the things in place. So these are the kinds of things where it's not just black and white. Like you don't go, don't offer people a drop. Because the truth is rain pouring and like we expect in Hurricane Irma and there's a mother with a baby, then I'm sorry. I cannot offer you a drop. But I'm going to do it in the, safest, in the safest way possible. Oh Lord, poor Jess. But you definitely, you definitely correct. 
I'm correct. Somebody said I'm correct. Auntie Sharon, may I say your home? What do you mean? You're in Trinidad or your home like in your house? Or you're in Trinidad? You gotta tell me what home mean, you know? Right? So that is that. Let me see how much time I have because I have oh, only 24 minutes and I'll do like two rules. Okay, let me see. Oh, okay. This is another thing that's very important to moms in particular. I know heels are pretty cute. I know skirts are cute. I, 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 know, I know the whole cute look, right? But we need to pay attention to what we are wearing. And yes, yeah, you ain't trying to answer Sharon, you cook. I could come for food. I'm seeing 44 viewers. Why are you telling me how many viewers you're seeing? I can see 44 viewers too. That's another thing that I need to figure out because I've be seeing 44 viewers and when I'm done, I have a thousand likes. Not that I'm complaining. Oh yeah, you cook? Yeah, yeah, cool. Is that a yes for your cook? Where you cook? I want to come. I like food. Guys, let me tell you all that. I like food. And if y'all ever want to show me love, cook for me and bring me over. <laughs> ah! Okay. So, let's get back to it. So, what are you dressing in is very important. That's a one plus for Halle Berry in the movie. She was able to run because she was in sneakers. She was in stuff that's comfortable. Even sandals, like even slippers and stuff, guys. Not th those things are not necessarily the easiest thing to run in. Like, not if you're choosing sandals, like try to choose ones that have, uh, have like the back part, right? You know, so so that they're they're more sturdy in in the way that you run. Um, don't I mean the whole hair out and stuff like that like we gotta really be boy you is you is really related to my mother auntie sharon because all the woman no cook you know is the all they say all they cook but it's really the man cook and all they just eating the food and offering it hey that that is my auntie <laughs> right so you need to be comfortable you need to not have things that people could steal and pull and be distracted, you know, so you need to, to really pay attention to what you're going to the park in. If it is that, let me say I'm going to my friend's home for dinner and there's little room between, I mean, like I'm going from her, from her house into her garage and whatnot, then great. You know, there are certain times where you need to have heels. I mean, I do presentations all the time, so I know what it is to have to wear heels and have to wear certain things. But you have to use wisdom in everything. If I'm, pres if I'm presenting a Ministry of Education and I have to park on Oxford Street, bet your bottom dollar that I'm not walking from Park Aid to Ministry of Education in my heels. I'm walking in something that's a little bit more, appro more appropriate to walk in and then I might put on my heels. Yeah? Because perpetrators look for easy targets. And I've said this. If your child, this is another reason, and I mean... This is, so this is another topic, right? This is another, not an, another topic, but another point. Jesse has a lot of spunk. And we're now doing role playing to teach the difference between spunk and rudeness. Because in the beginning, you be rude. That's fine. Because you know what? Nobody ain't taking advantage of a rude little child. Because she have real mouth. So you ain't coming back with her with no kind of nonsense. You don't take advantage of rude little children. They're not doormats that you can walk over. So if you want to think she rude, big up. You could think whatever you want because me and going for parent of the year and funny, I now have a parenting show. Ha <laughs> ha. So my rudeness clearly worked. You know, and it wasn't, that was more important to me than being well behaved and being a doormat. Because we have this thing where we're raising little doormats. Do as I say. Don't answer back. Don't talk. You have an opinion. I don't care what your opinion is. This is what I say and I'm right because I'm a parent and I'm so wise. Like that is rubbish. And that's why when the person came to talk to the little boy, he was mute. He had nothing to say. He couldn't be like, teach your children because they have some adults that need it. And let them be okay with being rude. When they get older, yes, you know, we could do the gray matter and we could start to explain. So I tell her things like, you know, I just get paid to parent, right? So you had to impress people in public. So don't be like too spunky you now because they ain't gonna get it. And they're gonna be like, oh my gosh, that kid is so rude. So we laugh and we talk about public behavior and private behavior. And I'm helping her through like, and she will go, mom, is this rude? And she'll say something like it. And then I'll say, no, 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 that's just spunky. Because perpetrators look for women and children that look like they're gonna be easy. You need to look like you're gonna be proper hell, plain and simple. They need to know, not me partner, it gonna be trouble, 
right? They need to know that. And you being on the phone and not paying attention and being all over the place, that's a signal to someone. So you see, when you're coming home, ladies, when you're driving home, pay attention. Just like I tell people, when you're walking, you see, when you're walking, in night, you need to count your shadows. If you see more shadows, then somebody following you. I need to turn around and watch them in their face and start to act like a crazy person. When you're driving, pay attention to the cars around you. Why is the same car like next to you all the drive home? Then take another block. And if you take another block and they're still there, then you need to be picking up your phone and calling and going somewhere else. Like, yeah, those are the kinds of things you need to be doing. You see, when you're on your phone and you're driving in your driveway, you need to get off your phone. We, the one time we don't be role playing and don't be talking and don't be getting to know what's going on with me and Jesse in life is when we get home. Jesse, know from the time that gate we start to approach coming home, it's time to pay attention to what's going on. Pay attention to your surroundings, start to get quiet. This is not time to be playing on your, on your tablet. This is not time for Marsha to be on her phone. This is time to say, hey, driving home now, I'll call you back in five minutes. You put your phone down, you get your lights out, you concentrate on what's going on until you're home in your house safely. We need to start to be aware, ladies, of what we're wearing, of, of how we appear to be in public. You need to appear to be very much in control and if you know where your car is don't appear to be too lost either appearance is important because criminals need to know that you're going and be hell and not gonna be a pushover when people come to have a conversation with jesse lee you never know maybe there was a kidnapper that once wanted to have a conversation with jesse lee and then they realize well this is one intelligent little kid and i'm not gonna waste my time because she may not be worth it Versus, oh, this kid's a pushover, right? Cool. Very quickly, gonna go through, because I know, I think we, oh my gosh, oh, geez, Louise, we passed 30 minutes, right? Use what you have. Like, in her case, I'm going back to the movie, right? Her gaslight was on. What was she intending to do when she was continuing to follow them and her gaslight is on? Like, seriously, that made no sense, right? She's also there pounding the window saying, give me back my son, give me back my son. You have, like, you have seen the car that your kid is going into and you, what did you think you were going to do if you held on to the car? Like, this is where you pick up a big stone because you're in a park so they have something you can pick up. Or if not, I don't want to get up and show y'all, but y'all need to learn to stamp. Stamp. You know why you need to learn to stamp? Because that's the same kick you're going to use if a man come. You're going to stamp him good and proper. And you need to stamp that glass wide open. Right? Stamp it wide open. And hold that bitch here and pull her out. This is, where, this is where your attitude, honestly, guys, like this is not time to be nice and crying and like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. If, if your gas lights on, you need to park that car up and you need to go and find a car and teeth it. She was in the police station and she saw a cell phone right there and she didn't have no cell phone. She seen a cell phone right there and she leaves. She ran out without picking up the cell phone. Boy, teething cell phone from everybody because you need a cell phone. There ain't no way you chasing your son and you even have a cell phone. So you need to know what you need and go and get it. Like have a plan. All right. And I'm going to end on what I think is like the most important thing. It may be boring to you guys, but this is where spirituality, because you know what? She says she don't pray, right? But guess what? All the way does turn to God, you know. And this is where spirituality is very important, right? Because there are two things. And I know that I sound crazy every time I say this, and I think it's probably the first time I'm going to say it in public so that, you know, people who don't know me are actually hearing me say it. But I'm not afraid to die, nor am I afraid for Jesse Lee to die. Because I believe in heaven. And I deep down believe that I'm going to heaven. So the Bible says that death is fine. In fact, I think it says something like, to live is Christ, to die is gain. So if you had to kill me, go right ahead. Because the kidnapper said, I'll kill your son if you don't stop following me. First of all, if you don't stop following him, then your son gonna dead anyway so you need to say and you need to start to call people bluff you see when i'm and let me tell you all that i say in all these things i have been robbed well actually i haven't actually been robbed because i 
acted crazy and didn't get robbed in the end. But I've been approached to be robbed on several occasions. I've been, jo I've, I've been in Holland, in the middle of red light district, and people, and I cuss my way out of it, talk my way out of it, laugh my way out of it. I have been jogging around the savannah, and I, and I hearing things going down. Like, why am I hearing leaves rustling the same speed I run in? And I turned around, and I was like, yo, I can hear you following me. So what you need to do is come out of the bushes and face me. Mad people behave, you know, mad people. Because it didn't make sense for me to keep running because they was following me. So what you need to do is turn around and be like, I see you. And I dare you to come and fight me tonight. And you know what they did? The leaves went that way. They didn't jump out because they don't want trouble. They want an easy victim. So you need to say, I call on your out buddy. And if you feel you're coming, come, come through. This is where the nice Christian ways don't work. You need to be like a real badass and be like, I'm gonna beat you down, right? Anyways, back to the spiritual side. Being afraid of death, honestly, is the worst thing that you can do because you're so consumed by preventing death that you're actually not really thinking about it. So if you kidnap to, a kidnapper says, well, I'm going to kill your child, I'm going to be like, do we have to do, buddy? It didn't really matter to me. Kill her. I believe in heaven. And if you kill her, all that's going to happen is she's going to be rid of this shithole called earth and she'll be in heaven, in paradise. So that's where spirituality comes in. If, God forbid, she does end up in some brothel or whatever, being human trafficked and a sex slave, I am going to live in hope that there's a good reason that she's going through this. Because I've seen women that have gone through shit and then they're standing talking to millions of girls and inspiring the shit out of them. So I'm gonna live in hope that that's God's ultimate plan and she had to go through tragedy. Because that's another thing. We need to start a change your perspective on how we see tragedy, right? Tragedy's there to grow us, to build us, to give us a story. If I wasn't broke no ass, I can't tell all you how to become, like, how to get out of it. I can't tell y'all that, hold on to your vision, hold on to it. I know that you can get out. So we need stories to, you know, stories make money, actually, if you were to, like, think about it from a very logical point of view. So that's the spiritual side of things, that I know if somebody kill her, one day I'll die too, and then we'll live for eternity in heaven. So it really doesn't matter. Big up. Do your thing. And that's also another reason, I guess, why even though we do talk about preparations and whatever, we're not really afraid to go and live and enjoy Trinidad because Trinidad is still a paradise. Yes. I am not crazy. Yay! Okay. So guys, it's been 30 minutes. It's been 37 minutes. I'm very sorry for going um, over the time. Please like and share, please like and share, please like and share, because, you know, we want to get like a trini in the 11 millions in parenting, blogging and stuff, and I've prayed to God and I've said that I want to be one of those moms in six months, so you guys need to help. Like and share, like and share. I love you guys. I hope you got your Guardian today, because my articles are in the Guardian on a Wednesday, and yeah, I think that's it. Okay, bye!